Rabbit, how you doing? Get my ass beat on by five, six guys. What? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over my simple Sentinel Support Healer build. We're going to have two configurations on this. One that is the easiest to play, one that takes a little bit more attention to your timing on your cooldowns for your procs. Even in its simplest setup, this is a light armor character with one piece of heavy gear that will be procking up to 33,000 resistance and keeping an 8% damage mitigation for minor protection. In its more complex setup, you will end up with uh, two pieces of potentates that will be up at all times, so you'll have an additional 5% mitigation at all times from that. So let's go ahead and get into the gear. Okay, for our first setup, we're going to start out with our main bar being the resto bar with uh, Winners for Spite. The fifth trait on this is extremely useful. Uh, we don't have to be healing any type of ability that leaves a ground A, we will proc this. Um, so it's going to help us with when we need to even be throwing out shards to a tank that, or somebody that just needs the resources. We're going to be giving them this heal with the shards as well. Back bar, we're just running sword and shield. And I would suggest running the Absorb Stamina Enchant uh, for your melee as opposed to the magic. We do have the Tristat Enchant on the shield because we want to be able to proc our second set at a whim going into battle and have it up. And to proc that, we're going to need to be able to heal ourselves. So when we switch to the back bar, our health increases. We get a tick of healing and it will proc our second set. For our monster set, we're running two pieces of Lord Warden. The head in heavy, shoulder will be in light. We're going to run the Tristat enchant on all the big pieces. Just regular magic enchants for all the little pieces. Now, the reason why I am doing this uh, is because with the changes to Greymore, a lot of our DPS players and tanks and things, through the changes to the sets and the nerfs that happen to resistances, being able to give the group an extra 3,000 resistance is a pretty big plus. And our last set will be Hades. Great recovery on this set with a little bit of max, just like winners, but the fifth piece is going to give us that warming aura. The heal off of it is eh, but the biggest thing is going to be the reduction of block cost. Because we're in a light armor character and this set is designed with everything being AoE based, we actually want to be up front with our tanks and with our frontline healers. Uh, giving them the extra support, the extra resistances, the reduced block cost. This goes a long way in helping our group utility. Now, if you'll notice, 
all of my pieces are in, impenetrable. That's because when I was testing this, I was basically the solo healer in groups of 12. Um, and I just wanted a little bit of extra resistance for that. However, this really is designed to be standing next to like my frontline healer build and tanks. So if you do have a healer that is in your group that is running transmutation, then you should take off one or two of your impenetrable pieces and put it into sturdy to reduce your block cost even further for this build. Now you'll notice I have two rings and hitties and then the necklace and winners. This is done on purpose. For a little bit of a more robust setup what I do is I replace the two hitty rings with two rings of potentate. That way I have the 5% damage mitigation up no matter what bar I'm on. And then what I do is switch out Winner's Respite Sword and Board for Hitty Sword and Board. That way you can proc your winners on your front bar, have the 10 second cooldown, proc your hitties on the back bar, and you have a 12 second cooldown on that. And then that'll allow you to have the 5% mitigation up at all times. Uh, that does really help the survivability of the build, but you do have to pay much more attention to your cooldown times on your procs to keep those up as much as possible. Okay, for our skills, we're going to start out with Ritual of Rebirth. This is a great burst heal. It has a good radius, um, even hitting that one person outside the radius. Then we're going to have Luminous Shards. This is something that we're actually going to be casting out and keeping up quite frequently. It's not anything to do with the damage itself, but this is what we're going to use to feed uh, resources to the rest of our team. Not only that, but with Luminous Shards... Every time we cast it on our front bar, we'll be gaining minor protection for 6 seconds that reduces our damage taken by 8%. But as you can see, we're going to go ahead and toss out our shards and you can see that it procs our winner's respite. So not only are we able to aid people in front of us by giving them resources when they need it, but there's a heal now accompanying that as well as long as our proc is up. Our next ability is Radiant Mage Light. This isn't really anything for us to cast very often unless we're hunting uh, for a night blade or somebody that's trying to stealth away. But the biggest thing for this is while it's slotted we get major prophecy increasing our spell critical rating. This will help our crits heal. This will count for hitties and winner's respite that are just passively ticking can also feed off of this. So that helps our heals uh, be larger just overall and in general. And the second part of this uh, bonus for having it just uh, slotted is it prevents stun from stealth attacks on us and nearby allies. So again, we're getting group utility, we're supporting the people that are around us to keep them from getting stuns uh, from people trying to burst in and gank in the middle of fights, things of that nature. So this one is much more valuable to the group over the increased 5% magicka. With our total magic, that 5% only ends up being like 700 extra magic or something like that. So the getting the ability to prevent the stuns uh, for us and our allies is much more valuable with this type of build and what it is geared towards. Radiant Regeneration, uh, 
we just want as many ticks of healing going out on as many players as we can uh, to help keep proccing uh, hitties every time it's cooldown is available. Last on the resto bar for the regular skills is illustrious healing. Our ulti on our front bar is going to be practiced incantation. Uh, we're really resilient on this character, so I want the extra ticks of healing as opposed to uh, the additional damage mitigation. Back bar, sword and board side, we're having temporal guard, so we have our minor protection just there passively. Extended ritual. Best way to purify ourselves, get out another synergy to help heal and cleanse our allies. Now, I'm going with restoring focus because I want the additional stamina recovery. This stamina recovery will be coming in even if we're blocking um, and we're not getting our regular ticks. Uh, I have found that even when you end up with the zero stamina glitch, uh, the zero recovery glitch, uh, this can be activated and you will get some stamina back even when your regen is zeroed out. Defensive stance, we're taking this one specifically because of its passive to get the amount of damage we can block increased by 10% and reducing the cost of block by 10%. Uh, with this character being a light armor character, even though we do have really high resistance on it, we're still going to be block casting a lot of our abilities, especially on the back bar side. Repentance is a phenomenal skill. It's really overpowered, especially if you are in a group that's taking keeps, that's pushing the map, that is engaging in a lot of fights inside of uh, resources. You're gonna have a lot of dead NPCs, uh, a lot of dead players that you're gonna be able to feed off of. And for every corpse, you're getting a burst heal of that 4,000. So it is a phenomenal burst heal. It costs you no resources to cast. Plus on our sword and board side, when we're taking uh, heavy, hits uh, that are eating up our stamina this is a great way to get it back uh, to also get the additional 10 percent recovery to our health stamina magicka is uh, a great passive of that ability and of course our breath of life for when we're uh, just locked blocked and having to keep that cast out and healing up for burst heals this character is ignored which we uh, go ahead and get the extra health, get the immunity to the chilled status effect, get the extra cold resistance for any of the uh, mag magdens out there, get the extra stamina, but the extra alt gen is really nice. And of course, because of everything that happened with reduction of resistance is this patch the fact that nord wasn't touched is a huge bonus for that specific race okay for our food on this particular character we're going to be running the bewitch sugar skulls get all the max sort resources plus that extra health regen really helps with the way that they've nerfed healing this patch uh, of course, we're running the ritual for our Munda Stone to get our heals as large as possible. For our champion points, we're going to put 56 into Warlord to keep us able to break free for as cheap as we can. We ended up with three extra points, so we throw them into Sprinter so we actually get a little bit of benefit out of them. Tenacity is going to have 37. Uh, we are going to be heavy attacking on our resto bar to keep our magic resource pull up. 
56 into Arcanist for our magic recovery, and 56 into Healthy for our health recovery. It's really important and helps out a lot on this particular build. One extra point that wasn't useful anywhere else, we're going to drop into B Foul just to hope that people see that proct on them and cause them to cleanse or use up resources trying to get rid of that status effect. And 61 into Shadow Ward uh, to again reduce that cost of block as much as we can. We're going full out into 100 on both Blessed for our healing and Elfborn. So when our heals turn critical, we get the most amount out of it. Leftover, we're just throwing uh, 33 into Staff Expert and 37 into Thaumaturge. For our red CP and our resistances, we're going to get 56 into Ironclad, 59 into Resistant, 56 into both Elemental Defender and Hardy to get the highest uh, percentage of just flat out mitigation without having to put more into Resistances. and 43 into recovery to help our own healing received. No. Okay, that's my simple Sentinel support healer build in a nutshell. I do want to stress the fact that this is a support healer. It is really designed to be running up front with tanks or with my frontline healer build. If you have one player in your group playing the frontline healer build along with this one, you will see a lot better results in the survivability of your group. That said, I have run this as the only healer in a group of up to like 12 players. Um, but because of the fact that it's support and its healing is so much based on an AOE area of effect. And it is a big area. You basically, if you're defending the inner of a keep, you're generally from that front door to the edge of the first flag, fairly comfortably covering that entire spread of area. But that requires you to be in a very tight knit group uh, players that understand that they have these type of benefits from being in that AoE. If you have that, then it makes it a lot easier to heal uh, a group as this being the solo healer. Uh, however, again, I can't stress enough that this will really perform a lot better if you have a frontline healer build standing right next to it. All right, guys, again, as always, I want to take the time to thank each and every one of you guys that watched this video, that shared on other platforms, uh, that leave comments, likes. It really does help out, and I do appreciate it. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I will respond to them as soon as I can. Thanks for your time, and I hope you guys have fun playing the build.